Hello, welcome back to the channel. So today we're still on chemical texturing and today we're going to focus on the bonds of the hair. Let's get started. The basic building blocks of hair. To understand how the structure of hair is changed by a chemical solution, you must have an understanding of the bonds. So in this video, we're going to focus on the salt bonds, the hydrogen bonds, and the disulfide bonds. But first, we got to talk about how we get to that part, okay? Because there's a whole nother process that has to take place before those bonds are even built, okay? What are the bonds? Amino acids, peptide bonds, polypeptide chains, keratin proteins, and side bonds. So the side bonds will be the sulfide bonds, salt bonds, and hydrogen bonds. So let's see how this all comes together. Amino acids. Amino acids are compounds made up of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. So I want you to remember the word CONS, C-O-H-N-S, just an acronym for carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur, okay? That is how you're going to remember because you're gonna see this on state board. And C is for carbon, O is for oxygen, H is for hydrogen, and N is for nitrogen, and S is for sulfur, okay? These are what amino acids are made of. So, and I also want you to look at this picture here where they just look like little beads or marbles, whatever you want to call it. But notice that they are separate. And these are what are called amino acids. All right. So I want you to keep that in mind because we're going to need this again in a few minutes. Amino acids play an essential role in various bodily functions beyond their involvement in the hair health. It is important to note that different amino acids have specific functions in the body. So remember, there are different types of amino acids. So I want you to understand that amino acids are very, very important in our body's function, period. Not just hair, but they play a very important role in the body, period. So think about muscle maintenance and growth and repair, right, of the muscle. Enzyme activity that helps with our digestion our metabolism, um, immune function that involves the production of antibodies and white blood cells, which helps the body defend against infections, um, neurotransmitter production in our brain, hormone production. How about wound healing? Also the body's detoxification and the pH regulation of the, the body's overall pH. Amino acids can act as a buffer to help maintain the body's uh, pH balance. All right. So we definitely need that because it's good for normal um, cellular function. And then how about energy production? All these areas, we need amino acids. So they are very important to the body, not just the hair. Peptide bonds, in bonds. Peptide bonds, also known as in bonds, are chemical bonds that join amino acids together end to end in long chains to form a polypeptide chain. Now, I don't know what it is about peptides and in bonds, but I don't know what it is that get the people tripped up. All you need to know is that peptide bonds and in bonds are the same thing. People are always looking for something else, they are the same thing. Okay, so I want you to look, let me get my little thing here. I want you to look over here. These are amino acids, and I want you to notice that they are singular, singular little beads. They're not connected at all in any way, all right? These are amino acids, singular beads. But now I want you to come over here, and I want you to see where these are linked like a chain, all right? Like a little chain of beads. So here on the end is an end bond or a peptide bond. 
then we have an amino acid. Then we have an end bond, amino acid, end bond, amino acid, end bond, amino acid, end bond or peptide bond, amino acid, peptide bond, amino acid, peptide bond or end bond, whatever you want to call it. Okay? This now has become a peptide chain because it is linked these beads are now linked by these end bonds okay once they are linked like end bonds these now are going to become a peptide chain or a polypeptide chain okay and in the next screen we're going to see how you can tell the difference if it's a peptide or a polypeptide Polypeptide chains are long chains of amino acids joined together by peptide bonds. So, how do we tell the difference between a peptide and a polypeptide? Okay, I'm glad you asked. Short chains of less than 50 amino acids are called peptides. Longer chains are called polypeptides or proteins. Okay, so 50 or less is peptides. Longer chains are called polypeptides or proteins, okay? So, the, the many bonds in keratin proteins gives the hair its distinct structure, strength, and its resilience, okay? Because we do a lot to our hair. So, what it does is it allows the hair to form a long, strong strand that can withstand repeated washing, brushing, heating, all these things that we do to our hair, okay? Keratin proteins are long coil polypeptide chains which are linked together by peptides, also known as end bonds. Now, remember these beads are, when they're singular, they are amino acids. They're not attached in any way, okay? But when we go here and we see that they are like a string of beads and they're less than 50, they now are considered peptides, all right? This is a peptide chain, 50 or less, okay? But then when you have more, they become polypeptides, right? Polypeptide chain or a protein chain, okay? So amino acids, peptide chain, polypeptide chain, okay? Now, remember that amino acid is the building block of protein. Amino acids, building block of proteins. Keratin is a specific protein that's made up of amino acids, all right? So now, keratin forms the basis for hair, nails, and the outer layer of our skin, okay? Remember that. Side bonds. The cortex is made up of millions of polypeptide chains cross-linked by three types of side bonds. Salt, hydrogen, disulfide. These bonds are responsible for the elasticity and strength of the hair. Okay? Salt bonds, hydrogen bonds, and disulfide bonds. Altering the bonds in the hair the salt bonds, hydrogen bonds, or the disulfide bonds make it possible to wet set, thermal style, permanent waving, curl reforming, and chemical relaxing. So once you look here, these are our, these are our side bonds, right? These are our side bonds. We have hydrogen bonds, salt bonds, and disulf disulfide bonds, okay? We're going to talk about how we break these bonds and what happens when we break them. Salt bonds involves a salt bridge that forms between the negative charge on one protein and the positive charge on another. 
These bonds are easily broken by the change in the pH and they're reformed when the pH returns to normal levels. Salt bonds account for one third of the hair's total strength. They will help provide some strength and stability to the hair structure. When salt bonds break, it allows the keratin proteins to move more freely, leading to swelling and softening of the hair's fiber. So now salt bonds are broken by the change in the pH. Okay, so when we shampoo the hair, it's negative charge. Notice how the hair feels rough when you shampoo the hair. So that's the negative charge. And when we condition it, the hair is in a positive charge. Notice how the hair feels soft and silky. You can't have two negatives and you can't have two positive. It has to be a negative and a positive. Think about when. If you're a guy, you're jumping a car, okay? You can't put two positives or two negatives. It has to be a negative and a positive charge, okay? You can't put two together, all right? So one, the negative and the positive charge, shampoo is, neg shampoo is negative and conditioner is positive. And you're going to see when we get to the shampooing section um, of the videos of the video, well, a video of shampooing and conditioning, where we talk about, we get more into the negative and positive and why they're negative and positive. Okay. Examples of what breaks the salt bonds. So shampooing, negative charge, antiotic. Conditioners, positive charge, cationic. So if you remember C for conditioners, then you'll remember A, A for anionic for shampoo. Okay, so water surfactants and physical thermal stress over time are the main culprits when it comes to breaking salt bonds in the hair. Because there are several things that could break the salt bonds in the hair. So swimming, uh, humidity, daily wear and tear, heat styling, and of course, chemical textured services can break the salt bond because it's broken by the pH, the change in the pH. And chemicals definitely changes the pH. Hydrogen bonds are weak physical side bonds that are also the result of an attraction between opposite electrical charge. Hydrogen bonds are easily broken by water roller setting or heat thermal styling and they reform as the hair dries or cools hydrogen bonds account for about one third of the hair's total strength disulfide bonds are a strong chemical side bond formed when the sulfur atoms in two adjacent protein chains are joined together the sulfide bonds are the strongest of all three bonds and account for one third of the hair's total strength. So if you look here, we see the sulfide bonds and adjacent each other are two sulfur, sulfur atoms. These are sulfur atoms. This is the sulfide bonds, all right? Out of these three bonds, the sulfide is the strongest because the sulfide bonds are broken by chemicals. Okay. The sulfide bonds are not affected by water, but boiling water can break and alter their appearance. There are fewer disulfide bonds than salt and hydrogen bonds, but the sulfide bonds are the strongest. And remember, they are broken by chemical. Okay. Boiling water is an extreme, extreme circumstance. So I want you to also remember that excessive high heat from styling damages the structure through the disruption of the bonds. And this can cause dehydration, physical stress on the hair, um, and it will lead to dry, brittle, and breakage prone hair. Okay, so we have come to the end of our video. I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you have a better understanding of the bonds in the hair. 
Following this screen are some Q&A questions to help you reinforce what you've learned here today. And if you have any comments for me, leave a comment down below or reach me at strictlyeducation at gmail.com and I will get back to you. And I'll see you guys in the next video.